we continue to make an exploration into form is emptiness and emptiness is form. In a time long ago there was a king who ruled benevolently over a large and very prosperous kingdom. And very often in the evenings in disguise and in the company of a trusted advisor, he would go out into the city and roam the streets. And when he found a household that was in need, he would place gold outside the door. If there was a homeless person, he would ensure that someone was sent to take care of them find a place for them to be safe and fed. And oftentimes they would sit in the coffee shops and listen to the conversations joining in uh, with the local people, the tradesmen and the merchants and so forth, who sat after their day's work discussing the affairs of the day and their lives. One day when the king and his advisor were sitting in a coffee shop sharing in the conversations, a certain merchant said, May our benevolent king live forever, but his life must be very boring and uninteresting. Well, the advisor's shackles went up and said, Why do you say that? And the merchant said, well, all he does all day is entertain uh, visitors from other states and, and sit at banquets and the like. And the king, gesturing to his advisor to keep silent, said, well, what should he do? And the merchant said, he should have a trade. Well, this brought a thought to the king and after a time they left the coffee shop and when they returned to the palace, the advisor said to the king, just give me the word and I'll go back to that coffee shop and make sure that that merchant and all those who agreed with him are punished. No, 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 said the king, they're quite Right, tomorrow you call into my presence all of the artisans of our town. So the next day, called to the palace were the coppersmiths, the woodworkers, the potters, the weavers, and the king viewed all of what they did. And finally, he chose the art of weaving. Weaving was famous in his city. So he invited the greatest weavers of his land to teach him the art of weaving. And he became extremely adept. And he found that after a hard day of listening to people's problems and attending the affairs of state, when he sat at his loom, he dropped all of the cares and anxieties and was at peace. But besides this, he started to weave and perfected a motif that he wove into every piece that he created. Well, it so happened that one evening when he and his advisor were out in disguise, sitting in the coffee shop, the king had omitted to take from his finger a very, very valuable ring, gold with a 
a priceless stone embedded into it. And this was noticed by a couple of robbers who were sitting at a table nearby. So when the king and his advisor left the coffee shop, the robbers accosted them both with knives, took them back to their den, and robbed them of all that they had in their possession. Now the king carried a bag with him that he had the gold that he distributed and so forth. But after they'd taken all that they possessed, one robber said to the other, well, what will we do with them now? And the other robber said, kill them, kill them. But the advisor spoke up and said, if you kill us, you will be doing yourself a very great disservice because we are travelers who have come to this city. My companion is a master weaver and he weaves objects which can be sold for thousands of gold coins to the royalty of this realm. So the robbers conferred with each other and they decided that, well, you know, we'll, we'll have him uh, weave some pieces for us and then we'll kill them. So as it happened, the king had in his bag that he had with him at all times, his little miniature loom. And this loom was taken out and given back to him and also that which would allow him to create a handkerchief. Now this handkerchief took him three days to weave. It was the most exquisite thing he had ever woven. Of course, including the motif that was his way in any anything that he created. So this was handed to the robbers and in with instructions to take it to the palace and offer it to the queen. So now, dressed in finery that was bought with the gold that the king had in his bag, the robbers went off to the palace and they were brought into the presence of the queen. And when the handkerchief was handed over to her. She immediately recognized the motif of her husband who had been missing for some days. So she called over a servant and she said, give this man a thousand gold coins immediately. And said, please, Please bring me more of this beautiful work. But as soon as the robber had left the palace, the queen quickly called the captain of the guard and said, follow that man. And there, hopefully, you will find our king in good health. Now the robber went back to his den and was very busy congratulating himself on their windfall and saying that we'll have this person make ten more and then we'll kill them. When the door burst open and the captain of the guard and his soldiers came in and the king was never so glad to see his faithful soldiers. Now, of course, we know the fate of the robbers. Even in their finery, their heads were lopped from their shoulders. The question that arises from this story is, in the place we now find ourselves, in the state we now find ourselves, what for you is the meaning 
of the trade, the loom, and the motif. The trade, the loom, and the motif. We're naked. Our ego garments have been stripped away from us. Even perhaps the thought of who we are, I'm a this or a that, so what are we left with that these things represent the trade, the loom, and the motif. When we're naked and have stripped away all of the ego garments of what we think we've created as a skill or mandate of purpose, these are what we're left with, isn't it, in our nakedness. It's what we have to offer. What we have to offer in whatever way, with our spoken word, with our touch. So to look and acknowledge these things is very necessary for us, isn't it? Thank you.